Hi, this is Tutor Nick P, and this is lesson 370. Today, uh, we're going to cover the difference between a proverb, a fable, and a parable. Yeah, because sometimes students may ask, what's the difference between these three? All right, let's look at the first one, which is probably the most common. We hear about proverbs more than any of these. Proverb is a short saying or phrase, right? That's a key part right away, is it's really more like a statement or a saying where the next two, fable and parables, will be stories. All right, so a proverb is a short saying or phrase that expresses a truism. All right, what's a truism? Truism is something that can be recognized in life, often through common sense or practical experience. Mm -hmm. A proverb states that the truth and allows the listener to think about it. Uh, and it implies advice, but it doesn't really push it on you, you know, like it's specifically trying to, you know, try very hard to teach you. But by recognizing it, hopefully you'll figure it out yourself. Uh, haste makes waste would be a good example of a proverb. Okay, meaning, you know, uh, if you fool around too much, uh, hey, you try to hurry too much, you're probably going to make mistakes. This could be recognized probably all over the world. doesn't matter what country or culture you're in. Most people would probably agree that, you know, if you try to rush too much, often it causes you to make more mistakes than less mistakes, and you end up wasting more time and energy. So this is more like a typical proverb. Okay, let's look at a fable. Uh, now, a fable is a short story, so it is a story usually using anthropomorphism or personification. All right, this uh, is basically the idea of giving human characteristics, uh, human characteristics or, or behavior to something that is not human, especially animals or other objects. The goal of a fable is to teach a lesson. Uh, typical examples can be found in Aesop's fable. Yeah, remember, Aesop's probably the most famous one, even though there are other fables in other countries and cultures too, but he's the most famous, and he definitely liked to use a lot of animals. Remember, I think I've talked about him before in some videos. You know, he used to be a slave, and he purposely didn't want to use real identity, so using an animal was a way of escaping, but he was really talking about people, but this way he could kind of hide what he was talking about then by using the animal and still teach a lesson at the same time. So uh, he is well known for fables. Uh, examples include like, um, you know, the boy who cried wolf would be a good example, or the hare and the tortoise. Most people are familiar with these two, you know, the boy that was fooling around, calling, you know, wolf, 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 everybody come out and then nobody would believe him after a while. And the hare, the hare meaning like the rabbit and the turtle, the hare and the tortoise, they had the race. And remember the rabbit that went to sleep and, you know, the, uh, the, the turtle ended up beating him. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, fables sometimes are remembered by key lines that sum up the lesson. So, so really what I mentioned here, like the boy who cried wolf, now that's the fable. But you could use like a key line like just to cry wolf. And this could almost be used, well, this could be used as kind of like a proverb. Uh, the same with, uh, you know, the other one, like slow and steady wins the race, you know, with the hare and the tortoise. Because, you know, the, the turtle uh, was the one that didn't give up. He just, even though he's moving slow, he never gave up and he continued. And he won, mostly because the rabbit fooled around, which is kind of another lesson of that story. All right, uh, let's continue here. Let, let's look at a parable. A parable, like a fable, has the goal of teaching a lesson, uh, especially a moral lesson. Yeah, so uh, parables probably focus more on morals. Uh, however, it usually does not include anthropomorphism, so it usually doesn't have like animals talking or using some sort of imagination like this, and focuses on human behavior. Uh, they tend to be more religious or spiritual, okay, in nature. Typical examples are stories told by Jesus in the Bible, uh, such as the Good Samaritan. Remember the guy that was left in the desert? He was robbed. They stole all his clothes and nobody would help him. And then 
Finally, the one person that did help him was usually like somebody that was typically his enemy, uh, but he still decided to help him, you know, as the Good Samaritan. Or the prodigal son, remember the son that left the family and went and fooled around for the longest time and, you know, kind of deserted the family. And then the older brother there, who was the one that worked hard and stayed with family, but when the prodigal son finally returns, his father's so happy, you know, throws all kinds of uh, parties for him and even sacrifices the best animals and you know but there, there obviously was a lesson in this story too so this is what we mean by the prodigal son so this is more like a parable okay all right anyway so so remember both fables and parables are actually stories both try to teach a lesson okay but you know fable is a little bit more fantasy and using like animals that talk this one's more religious and uh, proverbs don't have to be stories. They're, they are actually just very short, more like statements or truisms. Okay, anyway, I hope you got it. I hope it's clear. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.